Hi, this is Lauren from Lemon Sky Actions, LSP Actions, and I'm going to be talking you through how to create your own frequency separation layers um, and explain the process a little bit behind frequency separation for those who think it's just a big scary word. Frequency separation basically means separating the high frequencies, which is the uh, texture of your image, the, um, the, the highlights and the shadows that form texture, and the low frequencies, which is the tones, the colours, the undertones of your image. Separating these into two separate layers um, means you can work individually on the colours and the uh, textures of your image with um, a lot more non-destructively than you could if you were working on a flat image. Um, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can, but those that know me know I tend to ramble. I'm non-scripted, so um, please forgive me if I ramble on. I will try not to. OK, so as you can see here on my screen, we have the word frequency. Can you see that? It's quite small. It says frequency. Um, this is actually a low frequency layer. It's very, very blurry. And what happens if I begin to zoom in to the uh, to the low frequency layer? separation can you see that separation is created as a high frequency layer and the word frequency I created as a low frequency layer so now unless you step very far away from the screen um, or perhaps blur and squint your eyes you cannot see the word frequency however if I zoom out there we go frequency separation frequency separation that's quite cool so how does this apply to your newborn photographs? Well, as a newborn photographer, um, part of our uh, job does, does um, involve retouching a newborn skin. This is because we shoot for sharpness. Our um, professional gear and whether we use studio lights or natural light um, does invariably pick up um, all the little new blemishes of a baby's skin that wouldn't necessarily show so much to the parent's naked eye when they're holding their baby or even on mobile phone photos. But as professionals, when we take these professional style photographs, it is inevitable that we will pick up some of these very, very temporary spots, scratches, um, little cuts, bruises, anything that wouldn't normally be on baby's skin. Um, as professionals, we can see. Um, even things like little hairs, um, you know, hair out of place, bits of fluff, flaking skin and milk spots. There are certain parts of a newborn um, that I don't like to touch. I don't, I, I adore um, flaky feet and hands. I think that's part of being a newborn. So unless something is peeling and hanging off um, and doesn't look particularly um, appealing in a, in a long term photograph for the family's wall, then I would leave it there. But things that um, like, you know, bruises where the baby here has scratched their face, which is quite common. Anything that perhaps has come up that day, um, as we know, you sometimes get parents who come in and say, oh, my goodness, you know, yesterday they were fine. Today they've broken out in this rash. Um, baby's skin is obviously adjusting to being out of the womb. Um, it's adjusting to the um, the hot and the cold air um, and baby themselves is, is adjusting to, to feeding, to routines, to washing power, um, to all the different people touching and handling them. And this can result in, um, you know, kind of little flare ups, rashes, scratches and bruises in the first couple of weeks of baby's life. And as professionals, we shoot for sharpness, like I said, so we get the lovely eyelashes and the lip detail. This also means it really magnifies any little spots, dots and scratches on baby's skin. Uh, most babies, you can fix this by using uh, the spot healing tool, the patch tool, um, the clone stamp, you know, your own kind of preferred methods of fixing. But what if you want to go in and make the fix a little bit more natural? That's where frequency separation comes in. You may find once you've done your normal edit and um, once you've corrected the exposure and the white balance and the tones and the colours of your image, you may find that the skin actually doesn't look as harsh as it does on your original photo. I'm going to do a very <clears throat> a very quick edit here um, using the LSP Signature Newborn Collection. This should take just a minute or so. If, um, if you don't want to wait, you can feel free to skip the video on a little bit so we can start talking about frequency because, like I said, I do tend to ramble um, even though it's not intentional. Um, so for those of you who find my voice <laughs> annoying, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'll subtitle this. Okay, so I'm just um, I'm just running the LSP Signature Newborn Collection super, super quickly just to give you an idea of a base edit. Obviously, um, if I was doing a proper edit, I'd spend a little bit more time concentrating on this, but I know you really don't have time to sit around and watch me edit. I'm simply doing this edit first so I can show you the, uh, the difference a base edit can make 
to your um, to your image and the newborn skin. Okay, so I'm just taking some of the reds out now because the camera has picked up a lot of the reds. I've gone in quite heavy with that one, so I'm just reducing the reds. I'm going to paint away some of the yellow that has left. Okay, and soft skin. This is a very mild skin softener. Um, this doesn't actually take away any of the texture of baby's skin. It just softens down naturally. So let's see. So that's before and after using the Signature Newborn Collection. Like I said, um, that was just a very, very quick edit just to give me a base to work on. So I'm going to flatten that one down. Okay, so once you're happy with your general edit, you can then zoom in and have a look at the skin and you can decide yourself if you think it's worth using frequency separation or not. Um, for certain things, if there's just a few small patches, then you don't need to. You can use a spot healing brush um, or patch or clone. But for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use frequency separation. Okay, so first of all, let me explain frequency separation a little bit. I first started using frequency separation um, around six or seven years ago when I was a graphic designer. I still I still do do graphic design projects, um, but not so much now. I'm a very busy newborn photographer. Um, and what I, I worked within the music industry and uh, we called it airbrushing back then. Um, I think I think it still is called airbrushing, but this is basically frequency separation. And um, I used it on model skin, um, on images when creating cool graphics um, and uh, vectors for album covers and posters and things like that. Um, frequency separation on newborns is a lot less heavy handed. And even though it uses similar principles to the fashion um, and music industry, we do kind of have a different approach to newborn frequency separation. So first off, um, flatten your image and duplicate the layer. Let's call this the tones. As I said before, the tones are flattened in the, where is it? Oh, it's gone now, I've lost my layer. The tones are flattened um, or are created in a low frequency layer. That's the tone. So we've got our little frequency here. Uh, and we come out frequency, that's the tones. Separation is the textures. So I'm going to create the tones here. I'm going to duplicate that layer again and call it textures. The tones are basically the colours in your image and the textures are going to be what they say on the tin, the textures. So I'm going to make that one invisible for now and we're going to work on tones. For this I'm going to use a Gaussian blur. So you go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can play around with this. Um, you, you basically want the blur to kind of blur out all of the texture on your image but keep the you know the integrity of the colors i tend to go around 13 and um, like i mentioned before there is a frequency separation action by lsp by myself in the signature newborn collection in the parent um, retouch collection and in for the forestry school collection okay so that's the tones layer i'm now going to make textures visible again and to create the texture layer we're going to do something really interesting and i'm going to try and explain this as best i can we're going to come up here to image and we're going to hit apply image. Apply image is a, um, it's kind of more, I guess was first used for graphic design term. It basically means you're applying one image to another. You're mixing two images together and you can decide on the parameters of that mix. So I'm on textures, as you can see here, and I want to apply textures to tones. So I've clicked on textures and don't worry if I'm losing you a little bit as well. Um, all you need to do is make notes of the things I'm clicking um, if it's a little bit tough to understand. So go on to textures and hit apply image. OK, so this is where we start. The source is going to be your image that's open. So make sure that this your image here, it will come up with the title here. Make sure you select the image that's open. The layer, you want to select tones or whatever it is you called your tones layer. You see how this is blurred a little bit now, selected the blurry tones layer. Channel RGB, yes, you want to select RGB. Leave the others, unless for some reason you have anything that is transparent, that you want to keep transparent and select transparency. But um, no, you, you want RGB. You want it to invert. Um, and as you can see here, I'm going to put that down to one because that's where it will be when you start. As you can see here, the image will go white. Um, unless you have other settings, your image will go white. OK, you want your blending mode. Now you can see here the image is inverted because it's applied one to the other and it's inverted. If I take that off, it just looks like just the tones layer. Invert, inverts the, um, the image, as you can see here. Blending mode, you want to set this to add, not subtract. You want to set, select it to add. 
and that will make your image go very white. Um, basically, the, the pixel values um, in an image um, range from 0 to 255. Um, 0 is completely black and 255 is completely white. When you select add, you are um, adding the pixel values of one image, textures, to the pixel values of the other image, tones. Um, so basically that is going to give you a higher number which results in a brighter colour because 255 is white. So we are uh, making an incredibly white image here. So to change that, scale means how much you divide um, that pixel value by. And like I said, I'm sorry if I'm losing you. I'm just trying to explain this as well because I think sometimes, you know, knowing which buttons to click is great, but knowing how something actually works will set you in really good stead in the future uh, for using things like this. So the scale, this is set to one at the moment, which means the ad is at one. If I put it up to two, it will divide that number by half, which basically sets it back to zero, which will give us an absolute 50% grey image. There. So now the image is made up mainly of 50% grey. The, uh, the darker areas are lower than 50% grey and the lighter areas, here we have some kind of very bright whites, are higher than 50% grey. The opacity, you want that as normal, you don't want to hit preserve uh, transparency or the mask. And you want to leave the offset as it is. Um, offset only is really relevant if you're trying to make an image darker or lighter. So leave the offset where it is and hit OK. So now our textures layer looks like this. Um, and that's not very usable, is it? That's not very good. But if we zoom in, I'll show you. We have the textures separated. So you can see the, the little spots are, um, are set as highlights here. The scratches and the spots and the dots here are set as highlights and shadows. So here's where the interesting thing happens. With your texture layer still selected, come up here to the layer blend mode and you want to come all the way down here to linear light, not to get completely confused with linear dodge. Um, linear light is, is basically a blend mode that um, it's it, it, it basically is good for, well, sorry, I'm stumbling over my <laughs> words. Um, I should have scripted this. Okay, so it basically will darker any areas that are darker than 50% grey and it will brighten, um, it will dodge any areas that are lighter than 50% grey. So it kind of creates a dodge and burn layer um, based on the, on the, um, the levels of greyness in your image. So you select linear light and that bang goes back to normal. So the image looks like we haven't actually even done anything now, but we know on our textures here, we have a textures layer, add a layer mask, and a tones layer, add a layer mask. I also like to add a new layer, um, let's call it paint and clone um, between the two, there's a blank layer there. I'm going to select textures, paint and clone and tones and put them into a group and let's call this frequency separation. Okay. So let's have a quick recap. Um, if you've got a pen, this is a great time to make some notes. If not, you can just skip back to this part in the video or pause it to make your notes for frequency separation. So step one, create two copies of your background layer. Name one copy tones and the layer above it, name that textures. And then you can add a blank layer in between if you want to, or you can do that a bit later. Step two, select the tones layer and add a Gaussian blur. I like somewhere between 10 and 15 pixels, um, but it really does depend on your image, how big the face is in the frame. Um, so you can play with that setting, um, slide it up and down. You basically want to blur out all of the textures and all of the details, but you want to keep those colors. You don't want it just kind of one big blob. You still want to be able to see the picture if you stand back. Step three, select your textures layer and go to image, apply image. And then you're going to add the following settings. Uh, the source is your original file name, which it will be. I don't see why it wouldn't be. <laughs> um, the layer is going to be tones. So you need to go on layer and select tones. Next, the channel RGB. If it says something different, change that to RGB. It shouldn't be CMYK or anything like that, um, unless you're working in CMYK. So nine times out of ten, double check, but you are in RGB. Change that to RGB. Tick the little box next to it that says invert. And then on where it says blending, scroll down uh, near the bottom to add. You want the scale to be two, which will divide it by two um, and give you that nice gray look and hit enter. And then the last step is change this layer, this texture layer, uh, change the blend mode from normal to linear light. The blend mode, you can find it kind of just at the top of your layers palette where it says normal, hit the drop down box and select linear light. 
Now pop your frequency separation layers into a group. That's your tones, your textures and your blank layer if you have one. And you can now begin your frequency separation edit and I'm going to show you how. Please scroll on to video two now um, to see how you can edit with frequency separation, um, exactly what to do. Now you've done the boring part, it's time for the fun part. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please visit the website www.lsp-actions.com. Uh, the link is in the, in the description um, to see video two. Mm -hmm. 